So a Korean business article just gave us some really good details about a few things, right? The release of Throne and Liberty in the West, or projected releases rather, and some really nice details about how this game has been performing in the Korean market and possibly what we can expect from it in the American market. So let's dissect this, shall we? So just to start off and give you guys, you know, what you probably clicked on this video for, it says that Throne and Liberty is launching a closed beta in quarter one of 2024 and then looks like the game's gonna have a full western release in q2 2024 so just right off the rip that's what it is if you look over here on my calendar q1 is january february march q2 is april may and june so i would imagine you know we're not probably going to see it in january if anything it'll be like way late january most likely sometime in february maybe maybe mid-february and if they're really taking their time then maybe march but i don't i don't understand why that would take so long on that they would also need you know more time to kind of take their details that they get from the beta and implement them before Q2. So probably around February is my guess on when that beta will launch. Um, no details in terms of how you can participate in that beta. It says closed beta tests. So I don't think everybody's going to be able to, you know, participate in that. I'll try to find some more resources on, you know, what that really entails whenever we get more information, but it's kind of early to kind of know that right now. Um, so more to come on that. Uh, and then as far as the actual release of the game, like it said, Q2 2024, that's April, May, and June. Again, I would imagine whenever businesses say that they're going to be dropping something in a certain quarter, it is usually around the middle of that quarter. But it kind of just depends on when they drop the closed beta test, right? If they drop that in February, then we'll probably see, you know, maybe end of May, early June. If they're doing it in March, then it's definitely going to be like later June and they might even extend it into July, but you know, planned is around those times. Uh, so that is that if you were here for that video or for this portion of this video, um, then that is your answer. That is what we know at this time. Now, if you want to stick around and listen to me um, kind of talk about some of the other details in the rest of this article um, about kind of the projection that I think about this game, then uh, stick around. We're about to talk about that. So let's let's dig into this a little bit, right? So essentially, this whole article just says numerous times that the Korean launch for Throne and Liberty was sluggish, meaning that it did not generate the revenue that they were expecting or that investors were inspecting, expecting, not inspecting. Now, this article essentially gives stock opinion about having a buy rating on the Korean ticker of Instisoft. Um, we're not going to get into that. That's, you know, it gets into like recommendations and stuff. If you want to go look at that, this website exists. Um, I'm not going to give my opinion about that. But they overall are just saying like, well, yeah, we're still hopeful for the game, yada, yada. But... Um, you know, we're going to reduce how much hope we have, right? We can see that by saying that they're taking additional trimmings of their earnings projections and they have reflected conservative estimates for the title, meaning that they just don't think that Throne of Liberty is going to provide as much revenue as um, one might hope. So this kind of weird, right? Like why would a Korean based MMO that has Korean based MMO characteristics not perform well in Korea? Especially whenever the game had a lot of hype generated around it, whenever we were looking at trailers and kind of some different gameplay aspects. And the fact that, to me, I mean, personally, the game looks pretty good, aside from the pay to win, right? Like, just bare bones, like, what you actually get to do in the game looks pretty fun. Um, so it's kind of, like, odd to me. Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't understand why it wouldn't be so good. So it's not that I don't think that Throne of Liberty was doing good as a game. I think it has good player counts. Um, you can't really see what that is, but I, I would imagine that it has good player counts, right? Like servers are full and they are doing a good job in cracking down on foreign individuals, like foreign to Korea, right? So like Western audience people creating accounts and going into the game. I don't want to say illegally, but like, you know, not via the method that they intended for right like they have the game released in korea it causes issues if you're playing the game outside of korea and so because of that there's been a botting issue and not necessarily an issue but just you know other players from outside of korea going into the game um and so they have cracked down on that and recently did like this re-verification and it cut a lot of these people out right it cut a lot of the bots out caught you know a lot of things out of the game and so they're doing some server merges because of that. And that is getting the idea out there that the game doesn't have a good population. And that's not true, right? They they had a hyperinflated population because of bots, because of people from outside of Korea going in and playing. And they have cut them down. And also, 
right? Servers are extremely expensive to maintain and keep up. So if they can merge servers and make things look better to their investors, they will. So I don't think it's necessarily an indicator that the game doesn't have a lot of interest in it in the Korean market. I think it just simply means that, you know, they're cutting costs where they can. And if you can, then you will. Now, in terms of money and money coming into the game, the reason I don't think they had a good Q3 or Q4 release of the game is because their pay to win mechanic is a lagging indicator. The pay to win for this game won't kick in until people are putting their items on the auction house or excuse me, the marketplace. And they're not going to do that until everybody has the things that they need, right? So all these players that started playing on day one, they're still getting their best in slot items today. And so if they're getting their best in slot items, they're keeping them there for themselves. There's no reason to put them on the marketplace yet. Now in the coming months, as people start to get their uh, best in slot items over and over and over again, where they don't need them, then yeah, they're going to land on the marketplace. People will start buying Lucent and people will start buying them off the marketplace. So I think that this article is a little bit misleading in the fact that it's saying, oh, NCSoft and Throne of Liberty is kind of doing poorly for this game release. And, I, you know, I think they just maybe don't understand fully about how that mechanic is designed to work. It's not designed or not that it's not designed. It's just not going to provide a lot of revenue day one in the game. There's nothing to buy on it. It's a player driven economy. You have to build up the economy and the items on that economy. So that is that. Just so people think, oh, well, I don't think the game's doing good because of this article, right? I wanna kind of mitigate those thoughts. Now, is it gonna perform well because of the pay to win? That's another story altogether, right? This is a Korean based game and it's in, you know performing in a Korean market where pay to win is very commonplace. So this leads me to my next point. People think that Amazon's gonna be able to change the game when it comes to the West. And I am here to tell you that I 100% disagree. It's not gonna change. And the reason why is because they're already not making enough money for their investors or so they think on paper because it's lagging. And Amazon is not gonna be able to sit there and say, hey, NCSoft, you're not making enough money and we're going to force you to not make any more money, right? Or they're not going to be able to sit there and say, hey, we want you to completely change your monetization structure. It's a, you know, NCSoft is a publicly traded company. They can't just, you know, make snap decisions like that. Like the game is already made. Its business model is already agreed upon. Like that's not going to change. So, you know, some people are like, oh, well, maybe you know, Amazon will wave the magic wand and get rid of pay to win by removing the marketplace or removing Lucent really. Um, and then instead, you know, release the game with a box price launch, a monthly sub, or, you know, a, a different microtransaction shot. That's not necessarily pay for power, but, you know, pay for cosmetics or something. And I can just, you know, wholeheartedly say that that's, that that's just not going to happen, right? Like the, the game is not going to change its monetization structure to that right? Like you can't do a full 180 and Amazon's not going to have the power to force them to do that. So that's that. Now, in terms of what I think this game is going to do when it reaches the Western market, I don't think it's going to, you know, sit very well. It's free to play. So I think there's going to be a lot of people who go day one and, you know, download it, log in and, you know, see what Throne and Liberty is all about. But the second that they realize if they don't know already that it's pay to win, they're going to turn the game off and never look back. And that's just kind of what happens with pay to win games. And I have a video coming out later this week that goes more in depth about the pay to win structure. So if you want to know more about that, you know, stay around and you can look at that video when it releases. I could go in depth about what that all means and looks like. But essentially, just to sum it up, this is a PvP game really heavily revolved around the guild play. And it has some PvE mechanics, but really the, the bread and butter of the game is PvP. So when it's pay to win, the games are much more sensitive to that. And the Western audience just isn't going to be here for it, man. That's just, that just is what it is. There's still going to be some audience for it because people like myself are still going to go play the game, but it's not going to be widely adopted. That's, that's my opinion. That's what I think, which sucks, man. Like I wish Amazon could wave a literal magic wand and just go, yeah, Hey, we're going to do a monthly sub. We're going to remove all the pay to win. And you know, it's going to be happy days from then on out, but that's just, that's, that's not going to happen. So that's my thoughts about this. Again, we're getting a closed beta test in Q1 of 2024. So hopefully we get more information about who can participate in that. And then full game release in quarter two, 2024. So exciting stuff, man. We will see what happens and see how bad the pay to win the game is when it releases over here. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.